Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name's Live Mondo and welcome to my Destiny Diary Part 2. I never released Part 2 last week because it was Christmas Eve. Uh, I didn't think it would be the right time to release it. I've obviously got a couple of weeks of things I want to speak about. I won't drag my heels and we'll get right on to this. As always guys, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. If you've got something to add to the conversation, then leave a comment by all means. And if you want to see more content like this, if you like the conversation that we have, if you like the guides and what have you, don't forget to subscribe, start the 2018 off with a bang and become part of the family. So here we are, 2018. 2017 was a wild year, hopefully 2018 will be the same. I hope everybody had an amazing night. Some of you might still be having an amazing night. And for everybody that's watching the video, I just want to say Happy New Year, guys. Have a, an absolutely fantastic 2018. I hope everything you want happens and more. So... On with the video, guys. I have to start the video off with Eververse. It's been such a hot topic. I don't really want to get involved in it because uh, I don't agree with the common consensus that it's a scam. Uh, but I I'm going to say a I'm going to say a little bit about it. So what we have is we have the dawning event, and the dawning event brought in some some van vanity items with the engrams in Eververse and people weren't happy that it seems like a lot of the contents come in that's part of Eververse but people are it seems like people are reacting to Eververse like the only way you can get this is to buy it totally untrue well it has to be because as you can see I've got everything but the chest plate and I haven't bought anything now my RNG is good maybe the ship you just seen on the screen I have that I've got one of the Dawn and Sparrows See, I ground out my stuff, and then anything I didn't need, I broke down. Now, it's true, don't, the Dawn and Sparrows don't give you dust, bright dust, but I've been I've been grinding out the bright engrams, which all the sparrows you get from there do give you bright dust. So, sparrows and ships give you a lot. I mean, the ships, that you, I've had a lot of the same ships from the Dawn and engrams, and you get 5,000 glimmer for breaking them down. So I'm keeping a hold of them, using my glimmer to do what I need to do, and then just replenishing it. It's the, There's a plus and a minus with everything, but it seems like a lot of the Destiny community have become very glass half empty about the game. And there's a lot of salt if you go onto the forums. To be fair, people that are happy about the game don't really go onto forums to tell people how happy they are about the game. But people that aren't happy about the game are looking for anybody to listen. And that's all it's always going to be that way when you're not happy. And I, I you know, I'm I'm not attacking people that aren't happy, but what I am saying is if you want to affect real change, you can't do it from by attacking other players because you just come across as someone that's not worth listening to, and that might not be the case. Intelligent conversation, empowering each other, you know, reinforcing your points. Bungie is listening. And I know that some people go, ha ha, ha that's what they say as well. It's not when they say they're listening that I go, okay, you're listening. It's when they come back with feedback and go, okay, these are the things that we're hearing people saying the most. These are the things we're working on right now. I look at the list and I go, okay, there's four, four things there. Three of the things are, are things that I think need changed. So I'll, you'll get your chance. You know, I don't know why people, people expect the game just to flip a switch. I mean, this isn't an XP thing where they can just turn off a thing. You know, these are actual changes that needed needed made in the base game because people aren't happy with it. And then also what happened with EA, but EA have had it coming, to be fair. What they've done with the FIFA franchise has been... I mean, to be fair, they should, people should need a gambling license for playing that game because it really is... You can spend a heap of money to get nothing. But you actually need to spend the money to get, get, get the, the stuff you need to play the game efficiently. Destiny is not like that. But there's obviously a whole load of mistrust about what... EA have done and some of it spilt over I mean Destiny is still one of the biggest games of this year one of the biggest games of last year it will continue to be a big game a popular game when you get popular games you're going to split 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 uh, you're going to get split opinions you're going to have big camps of people on each side I think the thing that I'm hurt by the most and that yeah I will say that I'm hurt is the amount of content creators that jumped on the bandwagon and attacked the game that made them Put them in the position they're they're at, you know. Never, and no intelligence. What no intelligent conversation whatsoever. Just attack, and then you go on their Twitter feeds and they've changed their mind. But there's no video to support them changing their mind. I suppose people do anything for views. Not me. 
people don't like my, my opinions. I'm sorry you don't like my opinions. I'm just giving you some intelligent, truthful conversation. And, f- and for my money, all this stuff is available if you grind for it. Which is what myself and a whole load of other Destiny players that I know, that I've read about, that, that I speak to, that I've seen, that's what they're doing. And that's why they're getting the stuff. If it's not for you, it's not for you. You know, I'm sorry you feel that way. But hopefully, the future will be bright for you guys, especially with Destiny. So, what have we got coming in the future? We've got private matches coming pretty soon. Now, while that's not a big issue for me, it is a big issue for me because I know that a lot of people within this game, when the content starts to dry up a little bit while we're waiting for the next content, blah, 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 multiplayer's where it's at. That will keep people coming back for the competitive nature, for, you know, for just people that love to play multiplayer. Multiplayer in Destiny 2 isn't that great. Right. 4v4 hasn't worked the kill time hasn't worked people running about in packs like wolves hasn't hurt, hasn't worked so we do need some changes so private matches is, is a good addition you can get back those clan tournaments that people used to have in Destiny 1 you can go mess about in the maps learn the maps you know just just fun just fun they are, they, they, they've been talking about ranked playlists Whilst I think that would be pretty cool, I don't really understand it. Not something I've ever really done too much of because I'm not a great P- a great fan of playing PvP. I nearly said not a great PvP player, but maybe I'm not a great PvP player, but I'm okay. But it's just never really been. I like to challenge myself so and, and, and doing PvE content. Uh, so rank playlists, it will give people a reason to come and play multiplayer. Which I reckon will change the mood within the Destiny community if the multiplayer gets strong again. I don't think they'll come into the DLC. I think it's a big thing to bring in and just a just a, a bog standard update. So I think DLC will, is when that will come out. Uh, they're going to be doing a whole round of weapon balancing, which will be really good because then it will make more weapons more competitive. You you have a bigger choice to choose from at the moment. If it's not scout, it's not auto rifle, and this isn't just PvP. This is PV as well. Scout auto rifle. If it's not any of those, there's absolutely no point in using it, to a degree. To a degree. Uh, so so we need that rethinking the reward system for prestige events. That that's a great thing. I don't want any of the any of the stuff we've had in in the dawn and event. I want to grind for that separately. You know. I want a whole new set of things, prestigious rewards. Don't just guarantee a masterworks weapon for a prestige event. Give us something worthy of doing a prestigious event. And that's what I would like to see. They're going to be reworking the exotics, making the exotics competitive again. That could be very interesting, but it's not something I'm excited by. Because the ex- Maybe it's because the exotics are already here, and whatever form they're in, they're already here. I want to know what's coming that isn't here. Masterworks, the, 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 they've, they've talked about Masterworks armor. No, if it works as badly as the Masterwork weapons, then you can keep it. You know, when you get when you get a magazine size and an auto rifle and it gives you one extra round, you can pretty much say that weapon isn't worth having a Masterwork. Yes, it gives you an orb of light. Yes, it tracks your kills. But the idea of the Masterworks was almost to create a bridge between static and random perks somewhere in the middle. So, but if the random perks aren't worth having in the first place, what's the point? You know, I am quite happy with the masterwork weapons I've had, you know, but from the horror stories I've heard, it seems like the weapons that I don't use, that I haven't got masterwork, are the weapons that they're not, they're not worth having. I reckon, again, no masterworks is a quick fix until they can re-roll all the perks. I reckon Destiny 2, Year 2, will see a big change in all of that. Hopefully, it will see a big change. That that's the, and then and then the DLC. We've got the DLC to look forward to if everything's to be believed, whether it's a fake, uh, whether it's true, whether it's false, whether PlayStation did they really inadvertently leak it? It's supposedly called the Gods of Mars. Uh, uh, it was leaked a long time ago. The, the the Forge of the Gods. It was called in the leak. So. It, pretty close if that's what it's called pretty close it's going to take place on mars allegedly it's going to take place on ice fields of mars ice plains of mars uh i've heard talk of this nazarite character from the uh the 
warlock helmet uh, the last the last god of pain or whatever it is he's called he's been talk he might be part of it uh was allegedly getting three strikes a new raid new activities new weapons new 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 stuff is always good right don't expect the base game to change they'll still be built on the same systems that the game is built on now okay the changes that people are looking for the big big changes probably won't happen until year two it's kind of the way that they've always done it i can't see them changing it now all those things added together if they do rework them you know crucible size and kill time and stuff like that we're almost going to be and i know people are going to say yeah it's too late but better late than never you know if you got if you did get two two and a half month of playtime out of what you paid for with a dlc still would come i can't see how you got ripped off you know many people buy games and play them for four weeks and are very satisfied with it but with destiny people expect to pay the pay buy the game and then a year later still be well i will be but it's not all not everybody feels like that. not everybody thinks the same on games so hopefully the future is bright for all of us which brings brings me to my next brings me to wrapping this video up destiny 2 for me has been such a great journey 2017 was an amazing year for me you know watching people like slayer or Genizo were the people that inspired me from the very start to to try and solo stuff you know and then and then to create this sort of content i've always been a someone that liked to talk about destiny and like the the lore and the you know the people the people that i used to sit with until early hours in the morning talking about the lore about the vault of glass and croter and the hive and and i want to give a shout out to some of these people at the end of the video here i want to give a shout out to my original my original uh i've already said his name but my original uh muse which is slayerage so, some of the stuff he was doing in destiny one and right up to destiny two was just insane he made me believe it was possible to do this stuff easel trick he still makes me he still pushes me you know i watch what he does and he you know i know it's console versus pc but he still makes me believe that this stuff is possible but i want to give some shout outs to some people that that maybe aren't as famous to you guys as they are to me you know uh i've been a player since destiny one year one and this year you know cemented relationships with people who i've been playing with for a long time and have helped me reach this platform so i'd like to give a shout out to my original xbox clan uh which originally was rise of the raider and i want to give a shout out to werewabbit saint evan paddy daddy uh, moonwalker enraged viper nielser and pete you guys are awesome you've helped me get to where i am and i'll never forget that uh we've had so many great times together i can't wait to get back on xbox to play with you guys but just just know that you're never far away from you know my thoughts so thank you very much for always being there for me guys and then my playstation buddies harry bow uh brilliant guy much love uh Tempsky, meridian killer stay on jams wolf and everybody at the Raiders of Brohan, you've made my my time on Destiny 2 on PlayStation uh, a real joy. And I look forward to seeing what 2018 is going to bring for us. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. I appreciate it. And have, a, have an amazing 2018. And I will see you in the next video.